I've had a lot of requests to test winches rated for 12,000 pounds, so let's get the testing underway and see if that $300 winch is just as good as the one that cost almost $800. In the first test, we'll see which brands offer the fastest no load speed. Then we'll test the winches with a pulling force of around 1,000 pounds. Then we'll pull the Farma Bego, which is attached to a tractor and a pickup truck. Finally, not all the winches will survive the maximum capacity test. At a price of $289, the least expensive winch we'll be testing is made by RugCell. It's a 12,000 pound waterproof winch. State of the art 500 amp solenoid unique brake clutch system. 100 foot length, 3 8 inch diameter nylon rope. The 12 volt electric motor is rated for 6.6 .6 horsepower. Comes with two wireless remotes. Also comes with the wired remote. To power up the remote, you have to hold down the in out buttons on the remote control for more than three seconds at the same time and wait for the light to come on. With the rug cell, some assembly is required. There are two screws that secure the solenoid to the top of the winch. Several wires from the solenoid need to be attached to the terminals on the winch. There are also two wires that run from the winch to the battery. And the rug cell weighs 55.4 pounds. The gear ratio is 236 to 1. Includes a three stage planetary gear system. The rug cell is made in China. The sound meter is 24 inches from the winch, and it's 88 decibels for the rug cell. I bought a couple of winch mounting plates that attach to a 2 inch hitch receiver. While these mounting plates are rated for 15,000 pounds, they seem pretty light duty. So I also made one that's definitely up to the task if this one isn't. Four mounting nuts fit into the base of the winch and four mounting bolts attach the winch to the mounting plate. Two bolts fasten the fair lead to the mounting plate. To give all the winches the best opportunity to perform their best, I put together an auxiliary power unit. The setup includes a 1,000 cranking amp battery, an alternator, and a 6.5 horsepower engine. This will keep the battery fully charged and the voltage high during the testing. Let's take the winch out of gear and see how much force it takes to unroll the rope. Pulling the synthetic rope from the rug cell takes 8 kilograms or about 17.6 pounds of force. And the rug cell has a no load current, releasing the rope at 80 amps. It's at 83 amps pulling the rope. At a price of $350 is this Badland ZXR12000, which is sold at Harbor Freight. It includes a 12-foot ergonomic handheld remote control. I went in and paid the extra $40 for the wireless remote kit. Badland claims that their motor makes 6 horsepower. Series round motor stays cooler during long pulls. 3-stage planetary gear system for fast line speed. Automatic hold, automatic brake for maximum safety. A couple of screws secure the solenoid to the top of the winch. The amount of assembly required with the Badland seems to be about the same as the rug cell. Also, several wires from the solenoid need to be attached to the terminals on the winch. Four bolts fasten the winch to the mounting plate, and also two bolts fasten the fair lead to the mounting plate. So very much the same as the rug cell. The Badland is made in China. And the Badland weighs 76.5 pounds. 82.6 decibels for the Badland. The cable tensioner for the wire rope is definitely contributing to a lot more resistance. 10 kilograms or about 22 pounds. And the Badland's at 20 amps higher than the rug cell at 106 peak amps, releasing the rope and 111 pulling the rope. At a price of $370 or just $20 more than the Badland is this Zeke brand. All the winches except for the Zeke are rated for 12,000 pounds, but the Zeke is rated for 13,000. The Zeke includes both the wired and the wireless remote. It claims to have a six horsepower electric motor. IP68 waterproof design. 400 amp 12 volt DC series wound electric motor. No load traction speed is supposed to be at 21.3 feet per minute. We're going to test that. 236 to 1 gear ratio with a three-stage planetary gear system. Setting up the Zeke seems very close to the same as the rug cell and the Badland. The quality of the mounting hardware seems to be about the same as the rug cell and the Badland. The Zeke winch is made in China. 86.4 decibels for the Zeke. And the Zeke weighs 55.4 pounds. And the Zeke is very easy to work with at 4 kilograms or about 8.2 pounds. 82 peak amps going out and 84 going in. At a price of $660, or almost twice as much as the other brands, is this Mile Marker Maverick. The Mile Marker Maverick does not come with the wireless remote. Just like the other brands, this one has a three-stage planetary gear system. It has a 3 8 inch diameter, 80-foot steel cable. It's rated at 4.9 horsepower. The gear ratio is 210 to 1. With the mile marker, there are a couple of options for mounting the solenoid. Either way, there's a little more setup involved with the mile marker compared to the previous three brands. Also, several wires from the solenoid need to be attached to the terminals on the winch. The four anchor points on the mile marker are threaded. The Badland has a cable tensioner, but the mile marker Maverick does not. The mile marker is made in China. And a mile marker Maverick weighs 83 pounds. And the mile marker Maverick is by far the loudest yet at 93.4 decibels. And the mile marker released the wire rope at 4.5 kilograms or about 10 pounds. 125 amps going out and 131 amps going in is the most yet. At a price of $674 is this Super Winch. The Super Winch does not come with the wireless remote and the wired remote connects near the top of the control box. 12 volt DC sealed 6 horsepower motor. What's very nice about the Super Winch is it comes almost fully assembled. There is one wire that has to be connected that runs from the winch to the battery. 93.8 decibels for the Super Winch. The no load speed is 23.4 feet per minute. The Super Winch is made in China. 83.6 pounds for the Super Winch. And the Super Winch performed about the same as the mile marker at 4.5 kilograms or about 10 pounds. 137 amps going out and 162 going in is the most yet.
At a price of $705 is this Warren brand. Standard duty winch with steel cable and a 12,000 pound capacity. Just like the super winch, the Warren comes mostly assembled. Planetary gear train delivers faster line speed under load. The ground wire from the winch to the battery does need to be connected. The Warren has a wireless remote or you can connect it to the control box for a wired connection. The connectors for the remote seem very well constructed and durable. The Warren is made in China. 86.8 decibels for the Warren. And the Warren is very close to 79 pounds. Releasing the rope peaked at 89 amps and 101 amps pulling. 4.5 kilograms or 10 pounds is the same as the mile marker in the super winch. And the most expensive winch you'll be testing at $760 is made by Smittybilt. And a Smittybilt is the IKEA of winches requiring quite a bit of assembly. There's a lot of work to do before installing the winch on your vehicle. The control box has a bracket that has to be installed before mounting the control box to the winch. The wires feed through a slot and there are two screws that hold the control box in place. All of the wires for the control box have to be fastened to the winch. There's also a screw that fastens the rope to the winch. The Smittybilt is made in China. In order to properly wind the rope, the rope needs to be under constant tension. Given the price of the winch, it sure seems like the winch would arrive mostly assembled like the super winch in the Warren. However, having the consumer perform quite a bit of the assembly probably does save the manufacturer quite a bit of money. 89.5 decibels for the Smittybilt. And the Smittybilt is pretty light at 61 pounds. And the Smittybilt takes the most effort yet at 16 kilograms or 35.2 pounds. 91 amps going out. Unfortunately, the Smittybilt is already having problems and I had to replace the fuse inside the control box. And the three winches with synthetic rope are the lightest with the rug cell and the Zeke weighing 55.4 pounds and the Smittybilt weighing 61. In the next test, let's measure out 50 feet of rope and see how long it takes for the winch to pull in the rope without any load. And the rug cell has a 236 to 1 ratio, so it'll be very interesting to see how the ratio impacts the speed. At around 13.9 volts at the battery, the rug cell pulled in 50 feet of rope in a minute and 19 seconds. I went ahead and moved the truck and once again measured out 50 feet. And the Badland has a 265 to 1 ratio compared to 236 to 1 for the rug cell. And the ratio difference really slowed down the Badland. A minute and 44 seconds is 25 seconds slower than the rug cell. Just like the rug cell, the Zeke also has a 236 to 1 ratio. However, the Zeke is a lot faster than the rug cell and the Badland pulling in the rope. And the Zeke just rolled up 50 feet of rope in only 51 seconds. And a mile marker definitely won't win a speed contest for rolling up the rope. A minute and 44 seconds is very close to the same speed as the Badland. And the Super Winch takes second place from the rug cell at 73 seconds or about 6 seconds faster. So the Zeke is still the fastest at 51 seconds and the rug cell second fastest at 79. And the Warren is a little faster than average, but not nearly as fast as the Zeke at a minute and 20 seconds. So let's see if this MIDI build is faster than the Zeke. And the Smitty build is back in action after a new fuse. And the Smitty build is quite a bit faster than average, rolling in 50 feet of rope in only 59 seconds or 8 seconds slower than the Zeke. When it comes time to roll up unloaded rope, the Zeke is the fastest, rolling up 50 feet of rope in 51 seconds. Smitty build is also very fast at 59 seconds, Super Winch 73, and Rug Cell 79 seconds. So the Zeke takes the least amount of force to pull the rope out of the winch at 8.2 pounds. However, the mile marker, Super Winch, and Warren performed almost as well at only 10 pounds. No load current could be an indicator of performance under load, and the Smitty Built has the lowest no load current pulling rope at 73 amps. Rug cell is at 83 amps and Zeke 84 amps. Let's compare the performance of the winches pulling a three quarter ton pickup truck up a 12 degree hill. The truck's transmission is a neutral. I've already measured out 20 feet. And it's taking around 800 pounds of force to move the pickup truck on flat ground, and the rug cell is at 120 amps. And the rug cell reeled in 50 feet of rope without a load in 79 seconds, but it's really slowing down quite a bit under a light load. By the time the truck made it to the top of the hill, the winch is now pulling around 1,500 pounds. 53 seconds to move the truck 20 feet. And the Badland is only at 108 amps compared to 120 for the rug cell. And the Badland has a 265 to 1 ratio, which gives it an advantage over the rug cell for torque or pulling force. And the Badland made quicker work of pulling the pickup truck up the hill in only 45 seconds or 8 seconds faster than the rug cell. 106 amps for the Zeke is almost the same as the Badland. And the Zeke made the fastest no-load time pulling in the 50-foot rope, and it's the fastest so far pulling the pickup truck up the hill in 36 seconds. So 9 seconds faster than the Harbor Freight Badland, and 17 seconds faster than the Rug Cell. And the mile marker is at 140 amps at the start of the hill. And the mile marker performed very close to the same as the Badland on the 50-foot no-load test, and is 2 seconds slower on this test at 47 seconds. So the Zeke is holding on to the lead at 36 seconds. 181 amps for the Super Winch is the most yet. And the Super Winch is drawing a lot of current and is making very good use of it. And the Super Winch is super fast, making it to the destination in 36 seconds, the same as the Zeke. And the Warren is only at 95 amps at the bottom of the hill. 
So 36 seconds from the Zeke and Super Winch is the time to beat. And the one was very close to average on the 50 foot no load test. And the one is very close to average on this test at 40 seconds or only four seconds slower than the Zeke and the Super Winch. And this midi build is at 126 amps, which is very close to the same as the rug cell. And this midi build is also very fast climbing the hill, reaching destination in 37 seconds or one second slower than the Zeke and the Super Winch. A 20 foot hill pull under a pretty light load, the Zeke and the Super Winch are the fastest at 36 seconds. Smitty build is also fast at 37 and worn 40 seconds. The brakes on the pickup truck are applied and the winches will need to drag the pickup truck up the hill with all the wheels locked. With the wheels locked, the winch is applying almost 5,000 pounds of pulling force. At 5,000 pounds, the rug sill is at almost 200 amps. With a 5,000 pound pull, the Batland is at 261 amps. And the Zeke topped out at 285 amps, the most yet. And the mile marker is at only 220 amps. And the Super Winch is the highest yet at 301 amps. And the Warren is almost the same as the rug sill at 196 amps. And the Smitty Build is even higher than the Super Winch at 307 amps. So enough of the easy stuff. Let's put the winches to work moving to Farmabega with a transmission in park and a tractor and a pickup with the transmissions in neutral. We'll see how long it takes the winches to move the vehicle and the tractor four feet. Skipping the rug cell since it was damaged during one of the tests. And the winch mounting plate holding the Badland is rated for 15,000 pounds. And it's taking around 5,500 to 6,000 pounds to pull the tractor and two vehicles. A close look at the winch and it looks like the mounting plate and the Badland are beginning to twist. And the Harbor Freight Badland finished the pull in 58 seconds but it looks like it had a pretty rough day. I went ahead and mounted the Zeke to the much heavier duty mounting plate that I put together. Hopefully it doesn't bend or twist like the ones mounted on the rug cell in the Badland. And the Zeke has outperformed the Badland throughout the showdown and it once again outperformed the Badland in this test at 46 seconds or 12 seconds faster. Under a no load or light load condition, the mile marker is slower than average. However, if you're looking for a winch that works fast under heavy loads, the mile marker doesn't waste time. And the mile marker moved the RV and the two vehicles in only 33 seconds or just about twice as fast as the Badland. Very impressive. With a load of around 1,000 to 1,500 pounds, the Super Winch works pretty fast. However, moving 5,500 to 6,000 pounds really slowed the Super Winch. And the Super Winch pulled the tractor and two vehicles a total of 4 feet in 47 seconds or 1 second slower than the Z. And the Warren was pretty close to middle of the pack on the no-load 50-foot test in the 20-foot pull. When it comes to pulling heavy, the Warren is definitely faster than most, making the pull in 40 seconds, which is good enough to move into second place behind the mile marker. And its midi build is quite a bit faster on average on the no-load 50-foot test in the 20-foot pull. However, the heavy load really slowed the Smitty Built, and the Smitty Built finally crossed the finish line in 54 seconds or only 4 seconds faster than the Badland. When it comes to pulling 5,500 to 6,000 pounds, the Mile Marker Maverick is by far the fastest in only 33 seconds. Warren finished in second place in 40 seconds, Zeke 46, and Super Winch 47 seconds. To help sell winches, some manufacturers rate winches based upon the first wrap around the drum. However, let's see how the winches perform with most of the rope still wrapped around the drum. Applying the brake of the tractor should prevent the RV from moving. Unfortunately, Cousin Eddie's going to be pretty upset at me. Lesson learned, I'll have to anchor the chain to a much better anchor point. And Rug Sail has a synthetic rope, and the rope is still in very good condition with no damage caused by the previous three tests. For under $300, the budget winch is performing fairly well, but can it handle heavy pulls? And the rope on the Rug Sail just broke at just over 9,000 pounds, or 3,000 pounds short of its rating. I bought two winch mounting plates rated for 15,000 pounds, and both of them are now badly bent. Unfortunately, the rug cell is now badly twisted. And the battling in the winch mounting plate is already a little twisted from the first test. At this point, I doubt I'll be able to mount the winch to the winch mounting plate that I put together. Things are just too badly twisted. And the battling made it to just over 8,000 pounds before fading. Fortunately, the wire rope did not break. And the Zeke is mounted to the winch mounting plate that I put together. Hopefully, the mounting plate holds up without becoming twisted. And the Zeke made it to over 10,300 pounds when the rope suddenly broke. And the mile marker performed very well in the last test, coming out on top for speed moving the tractor and the two vehicles. And the mile marker performed very well in this test at just over 10,000 pounds before running out of steam. And the Super Winch is super fast for lightweight pulls, but is slower than average for heavy pulls. It'll be very interesting to see if it can match the performance of the Zeke and the Mile Marker. And the Super Winch made it to 9,675 pounds before fading. So only the Zeke and the Mile Marker have made it past 10,000 pounds. And the Warren works pretty fast pulling rope in the 5,500 to 6,000 pound range, and it's a little faster than average on the 50 foot and the 20 foot test. However, the Warren ran out of steam a little faster than average at 9,187 pounds, or around 1,200 pounds less than the Zeke.
And its Smitty build is also faster than average on a 50 foot no load and 20 foot pull. However, the Smitty build is a little slower than average pulling rope in at 5,500 to 6,000 pound range. And its Smitty build also performed below average on this test, topping out at just over 9,000 pounds before fading. However, the rope on the Smitty build did not break. So the budget price Zeke made it to 10,370 pounds before the synthetic rope snapped. Mile marker finished in second at 10,072 pounds and Super Winch, 9,675 pounds. A high quality winch can do some amazing things. So so I was very curious to see if a 12,000 pound rated winch could lift Cousin Eddie's farmer bagel off the ground. Fortunately, the large tree wasn't pulled over in the process. And the Farmer Bago is off the ground. Very impressive. I always want to help people by helping them find the best products and avoid the worst. If you want to avoid making the same mistake that I made buying this poor quality mounting plate, I'll leave information about this mounting plate in the video description so you can avoid it. So which winch is the best? Just looking at the numbers, the $370 Zeke came out on top with an average finish of 1.4 in 5 events. However, the Zeke did experience a rope failure. If you're looking for a winch that'll hold up under heavy load, the Super Winch had an average average finish of 2.6 and performed very well in most categories. The mile marker in Warren finished in third place with an average finish of 3.2. Testing winches is a lot of work and it's a lot of fun. I missed a few brands so if there's a brand you like tested please let me know. All the videos in this channel including this one are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea I hope you take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and I look forward to next time.